Hey, welcome to uh, Solo Ship Week Six. Um, Scroll Patrol, James the Win. Uh, hey, how was your uh, week five? Week five was okay. Week five was okay. It was a nice weekend of props. It was um, a just just missing tournaments, like just outside the money, but also like I kept trying to figure out how to fit Gabe Davis plus Justin Jefferson on my main build and didn't figure it out. So I ended up with Tyree Kill and Jacoby Myers. So Jacoby was fine, but Tyree Kill kind of sunk things, but it is what it is, you know, a uh, profitable week's profitable week. How about you? I almost did us proud. Um, I, <laughs> so I was at, actually at the beach. Like my family went out to, to Rehoboth just for like a, a quick, like getaway at yeah, just a couple hours from here. And I was, so I played a little bit later in my normal volume I had forgotten that I won a satellite ticket to the oh. four thousand million maker on on Monday. I think it was Monday Night Football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won the the like satellite ticket. Um, so I had one entry for it, and I finished in eighth place. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, and you was, almost I forgot was, to build it. You almost forgot to build the roster. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was gonna do like a few, like I was gonna do lineups like Sunday morning, but I was planning just to do like yeah, you know, like a typical like one fifty build and put it in like million maker or something, yeah, like the twenty dollar million maker. I'm like, ooh, I got this ticket. Like, I forgot about this. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and so yeah, I put in like a Josh Allen, uh, Gabe Davis, uh, Khalil Shakir. Nice, stack, yeah, uh, yeah. And Austin Eckler. Like Austin Eckler was like that last piece running back. I was like, well, like Eckler's good. It's fine. He'll get some receptions or whatever, right? And then um, put him in. And I think that was like the difference maker. But I, I was third in third place. It was actually is the best setup, like psych- psychologically, because like I. I was in third place going into the afternoon games and I knew I could not go up, but I, and I presumed I was going to go down a lot. And actually yeah. I did go back and forth over like, should I, cause I, the only player I'd left was the Cowboys defense. And I actually thought I'm going to keep it in. Like, I'm not going to try to go for first because like, I mean, it was third place was like a hundred thousand. I think eighth was 30,000. Like I, I, I'm going to lose too much. I think going swapping to one of the remaining defenses. Yeah, to one of the remaining defenses that had like almost no shot at outscoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I Man, that's like, nice. I, yeah. And especially I uh, Arizona. We came out this week. Out. We came out this week where like we saw people playing Josh Allen with with no stacking partners, and it's like I get it if Josh Allen scores 30 points, he doesn't bring anyone with him, but don't you want him to score 40? And if he scores 40, doesn't he bring somebody with him? So yeah, I love that. Uh, the Gabe Davis, Khalil Shakir, and, and just looking at, uh, I'm, I, we didn't get to do our show together last week, but I'm sure just looking at ownership projections, it, it's like the same thought I kept having was like Gabe Davis at this ownership and like the type of ceiling he has, you know, and then five minutes into three minutes into the games, you're, you're already like, okay, well, this roster's in pretty good shape. I know that. now. <laughs> yeah. It's like 98 yard touchdown or something. I, I, I barely had just finished entering my lineups and I go look at my phone. Well, how does it, how does Buffalo already have a touchdown? It's like, Oh, I, I guess that's how. And yeah, that, that was a good pick, you know, on that, that one, you know, I very rarely I'm going to enter like a million maker with just one entry. Yeah. I'm usually, I'm usually not going to play the $4,000 million maker. So I'm not going to max enter it. Um, you know, and so I just was fortunate that I had a one satellite ticket actually went with probably a chalkier build than I would have normally, although I think Brady was probably like the chalkier quarterback than Josh yeah. Allen. Uh, and Gabe yeah. was like, what, 3 4% owned in there, right? Uh, it was Gabe Davis? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, I just, I, I wanted to pair Josh Allen because I knew like Josh Allen has the upside that maybe Brady doesn't have. Right. So I was going to pair him. And if, if Pat Fryermuth had done anything, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, he so got he like, concussed but, early, didn't he, in that one? Yeah, I I think he might have gotten a touchdown. So it wasn't like a total wash, uh, but he maybe got like six or seven points and then and then left with a concussion. Uh, I think I had Chris Olave who also was concussed. Uh, yeah. Man, those injuries. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we got a good yeah, week this week, week don't we? Was it? I said we had a good week this week with uh, that, that bill. I feel like that bill's speaking of like – chalky stuff i feel like that bills and and chiefs game is going to draw a lot of ownership uh makes a really interesting single entry week this week it is and it's actually a fascinating single entry week it's one of my favorite weeks i think so far uh because we're, we're starting to get all the things we we get in a typical nfl week right we've got some injuries we've got the the fill-in cheap running backs we maybe weren't expecting at the beginning of the week uh we've got like because you know benjamin uh kenneth walker i, mean, I think they're Raised up a little bit, but probably not as much as they should be. 
uh, Ramondre Stevenson, and now uh, Daryl Henderson, I think, is like, yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, out. And then we have like that one standout afternoon game, you know, playoff matchup, the, the Bills and Chiefs, you know, that game, I think it was the AFC Championship, and it was going back and forth. And it's going to draw a ton of ownership. And so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think it's for single entry in particular, it's an interesting setup. Because I think that game is going to get a ton of ownership, but it also has a lot of upside. It's, it's hard to get away from. Yeah. Have you looked have you looked at ownership, like early ownership projections yet? A little bit. Uh, and... So right, right now, Mahomes is coming in at like sub 3%. And Kelsey sub five percent, which it, like from a standpoint of what's likely is to happen, we know the Bills have probably the best defense in the NFL. But then, how does Josh Allen, how do Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs end up being the tournament winners if Mahomes and Kelsey are doing nothing? You know, and so uh, it's kind of one of those weeks where I, I wrote up my stuff in the NFL Edge before ownership came out, and I was like, okay, well, what we're going to see here is higher ownership on the Bills side low ownership on the Kansas City wide receivers. But I thought Kelsey would still draw the ownership. I thought Mahomes would still, I I said Mahomes will probably be the third highest owned quarterback behind uh, Josh Allen and Brady. But instead he currently, he's way down here. And so it kind of like shifts my thinking to say, whereas before I would have said, well, Mahomes at high ownership in this tough matchup, people are overrated, underrating how tough this matchup is. And now it's like, well, people are overrating how tough this matchup is. If Mahomes and Kelsey stay down here, they become super interesting for single entry this week. I agree. And so the, the spread is actually a little wider than I would have thought. Like I, cause Kansas city's at home uh, and Buffalo is favored by three points. I, I believe they're favored by yeah, three points. And that that's giving Buffalo an implied point total. That's way higher than the other teams on the slate. Whereas Kansas city kind of falls in with some of the other teams. Uh, like green Bay has a, a pretty similar implied point total. I think like the Rams are up there. Uh, like Baltimore is not too low. Uh, even like San Francisco is at 25. Kansas City, we've got like at between 25 and 26. Um, and so the ownership, I think the projections then aren't overwhelming you with Chiefs players because like a lot of the projections rely on like implied point totals. And so, yeah, like Patrick Mahomes isn't projected that that highly. Um, yeah, Travis Kelsey is not projected to be the highest owned tight end. I think it's going to be Tyler Higby again. So that's it's an interesting setup because I think you can, I think you can game stack this game with a bunch of pieces, you have to make some like real sacrifices with value, but there's, we already know there's like, there's, there's some value running backs you can stick in there. Uh, or, you know, or you can, you can go off this game entirely. And I'm actually a little bit interested in the idea that maybe this game doesn't hit its total, or even if it does hit its total, it's in ways that are not necessarily beneficial for DFS scoring. So like maybe there's some defensive touchdowns, like maybe like Sky Moore and Noah Gray are getting some touchdowns. Um, you know, maybe it's like Dawson Knox gets like a touchdown, but that's his only reception. Um, and that there are pieces in this game, the pieces of this game all add up to something that you can fade. Like if there's nobody necessarily from this game that you absolutely have to have. Um, and that maybe then you can find some pieces in other games that are at extremely low ownership and that you can put in there to, to win in single entry. I think that if, if somebody's just kind of tuning into the week, right now and watching the show that sounds crazy to them and then when you really dig into this game after after i read mike's write-up in the nfl edge yesterday and started putting together my dfs interpretations it was like because all week i kept i kept being like the over-under is only 54 which means vegas is saying that half the time it finishes under 54 points you know like a, a 27 to 24 game with the price tags on these players is not a had to have it type of game. And they're saying that can happen 50% of the time. And then when you really start digging into it, you're like, yeah, this really could underwhelm. Buffalo could spread the ball around enough. I was going to throw Dawson Knox's name in there right before you said it. Like the touchdowns could go to the wrong guys. You know, Devin Singletary can score a touchdown or two, but he's never topped 25 DraftKings points in his career. And Dawson Knox could get a touchdown or two. Diggs could get the yards. Isaiah McKenzie could get it. He was what two or three touchdowns on the season, but hasn't he? I think he only has one game over twelve DraftKings points, and so these these the scoring could just kind of be spread out. And then same thing on Kansas City, where they're they're giving the ball to all these different wide receivers and these different running backs. And so if Kelsey doesn't get all the touchdowns, you know we could have something like a, a Bills won this game thirty eight to twenty in the regular season last year with Tyreek Hill still on Kansas City, and so. We could certainly have a situation where this is not a had to have it game. And I'm, you know, 
could could we come out with Josh Allen bombing the ball to Stefan Diggs and that's the way that this game plays out? Absolutely. And then the chalk hits. But the likelier scenario is that this game hits with other pieces or that this game doesn't hit. And so, yeah, something like I, I think this is important to lay out. I laid this out on the, my show with Pete Overzet a little bit ago, but the last seven times that Kelsey had a score you would want going back to last year, Mahomes in those games, 30 points, 24 points, 38 points, 35 points, 39 points, 28 points, 36 points. If you play Kelsey, if, if Kelsey hits, Mahomes is hitting too. It's a free square if Kelsey hits. And so if Mahomes is coming in at low ownership, that's a way to play it is like, okay, Mahomes plus Kelsey, bring back Gabe Davis or Isaiah McKenzie at low ownership. Um, or, you know, just say, hey, maybe this game doesn't hit and there's some other spots where offenses could go off for big games, right? Brady's going to be lower owned this week. Last week, Lamar Jackson's not going to grab a ton of ownership. Uh, Kyler Murray's going to be kind of low owned. There's certainly other spots that we could go this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards already. And I rarely have this solid of an idea in my head, you know, on a Friday that if I do a five or six rosters on, on FanDuel and DraftKings each, like single entry rosters that I'm putting in, like, so like six lineups, I'm putting in single entries or, or like a five, five max qualifier. Like maybe I only have one Josh Allen. And I think that'll put me way under the field because we've got him projected like 16% ownership. And I think, I think it's gonna be way higher in, in single entry. Like, I think he's going to be like 25, 30%. Um, but if I'm using like a Josh Allen, I'm going to be pairing him with a bunch of Kansas city players. Like it's going to be like a full, full game stack. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and just say, well, I don't want this game to be 28 to 24 or 31 to 20. Like I want it to be 42 to 36, like it was last year and get all that goodness. Yes. And then, then from that set of rosters, like five, six rosters, maybe I've got one Mahomes team and that'll put me way over the field, like double the field. Cause right now I've got him at about 8% ownership and like, yeah, I mean, if, if we're expecting all these bills pieces to go off, then there's going to, you know, it's going to be back and forth game. And we, we know these teams can do it. We we just saw it in the playoffs. So like, so yeah, I mean, there's, it's very possible Mahomes outscores uh, Josh Allen, but yeah, there's a, some other, there's other games being played. Um, it's, it is, it's the first week of bye weeks. So there's actually not as many games being played this week as, as you know, there have been previously. Um, but yeah, like Kyler Murray could get there. I, I still like Lamar Jackson a lot. I actually, I think my favorite correlated pairing, you know, from the Rotor Grinders expert survey is I, I like Lamar Jackson and Saquon Barkley, because those are two guys that are probably going to be way more correlated than we would like typically think. Because if, if Lamar Jackson's getting a bunch of, points then the Giants are probably behind then Saquon's getting receptions I don't know I get it might be it, it might be kind of donkey thinking I don't know but I, I actually I really like that correlated pairing this week because you're also then going to be missing some pieces from the the more expensive pieces like from the other from the Kansas City Buffalo game um and if that if that Giants you know Baltimore game just goes over and the the other game goes under you're you're leapfrogging a lot of rosters yeah, no, I think that's super sharp. And I also think the uh, on, on the if I'm playing Mahomes and Kelsey, I'm probably playing Duvernay because then my clearest path to first place is Mark Andrews disappointing, but I don't think the Ravens will disappoint. So then you could say, well, I'm getting those Duvernay points that he's ideally taking away from Mark Andrews. And then because if Kelsey hits, Mahomes is hitting, well, then that means that if I'm playing Josh Allen, I really want Kelsey to not hit. Because if I'm playing Josh Allen, why am I not just playing Patrick Mahomes instead, right? Like, I, to me, it's pointless to play Josh Allen with a Kelsey bring back because it's like, well, you might as well just take the free square with Mahomes. So Josh Allen, like plus one of his pass catchers, plus Mark Andrews, doesn't sound correlated to other people, but it actually is because you're saying that Kansas City scores their points in some way other than Travis Kelsey. And so you get Mark Andrews on there. But yeah, I really like, I like the way that those spots play off of each other. The, the pricing is kind of similar on those spots. The ceiling is similar on those spots. And so like playing off these, the, the Ravens offense, and then these, this game over here, that it looks totally unrelated, but because people have to decide between Andrews and Kelsey at the high ends of the price range, it makes it pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, I, I actually really like that Lamar Andrews Saquon or Lamar DuVernay Saquon. Uh, Wondell Robinson's also interesting in that game. And um 
you know, one of the easiest ways to not lose money in DFS is to only play good players. But I actually kind of, I think that Daniel Jones is like Daniel Jones, Wondell Robinson, Mark Andrews, something like that is also interesting this week because is Daniel Jones a good player? No, but can he put up 30 plus points? Absolutely. You know, and so uh, there's certainly some interesting, yeah, like you said, it's, I, I like this slate because it's not that complicated. There's only a few good spots but most people will be focused on one or two good spots. And then there's these other good spots that you can also sort of look to. And the running back's interesting because there's so many options at running back, but most of them are good. So when there's a ton of good options, my thing is like, don't overthink that spot. Um, I am curious your, your take on Ramondre Stevenson at as high of ownership as he's probably going to see in single entry. You have any takes there? Uh, I'm probably not going to, trying to get away from it. Like I'll probably have a lot of Robinson. I'll probably have a lot of, you know, Benjamin. Um, and then I'll probably have a lot of rosters that are three running backs as well. Cause the running back position is pretty stacked this week. And one of, one of my things has always been that if something happens after pricing, I don't try to fight it. Like it. And I, I believe like the, the prices on, uh, on some of the like the value running backs, like, you know, is the one that really sticks out to me. Um, and then, yeah, Ramondre, yeah, you know, is uh, 4,600 on DraftKings. Ramondre is 6,000. Like, that's a little bit more expensive than I would like. But I but he's also, like, good. It's not like Jamal yeah. Williams, who right. – and, and Jamal, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, right? Jamal Williams, he played 48% of the snaps the week when he hit. Had his longest run of his career, scored two touchdowns and barely hit value. Ramondre last week, I think this is important, he played – 54 out of 54 snaps after Damian Harris went down and Pierre strong, who's their, you know, rookie running back. They took it. I think the fourth round Pierre strong was active. Pierre strong has been active four straight games, zero offensive snaps so far, zero offensive snaps last week when he was active and Damian Harris went down. And a lot of times these situations where the guy goes down, this is what we say with Jamal Williams, the guy goes down and everybody's like, Oh, the next guy's going to get all the touches. And that doesn't happen. Right? Like, Kenneth Walker is interesting this week, but DJ Dallas is still going to step in and get some touches, get the receiving work. Like Ramondre could literally play every snap against the number 32 run defense by DVOA on an offense that wants to run the ball. I will say like, I, I, I cannot get away from how many times in the player grid we've had a situation like this. And I've been like, listen, this is good chalk. You don't have to overthink it and you can move away from it. This guy can still disappoint, right? but it's good chalk. And then the guy like bombs. Right. <laughs> so that's in my head where I'm like, I, I, I've calculated it out. Like what's, what's Ramondre's bad game. It's like three catches for 25 yards, 75 rushing yards, no touchdowns. And all of a sudden he's got 12, 13 points and you didn't need him. But at the same time, he is really good chalk this week. And so um, I know that we're both like our, probably our biggest flaws is being too willing to be contrarian. Right. And so if we're both like, yeah, I'll play Ramondre Stevenson. <laughs> that feels good to me. It's just, it, he certainly can still miss this week and he's going to be like 50% owned. Um, I'm hoping that like the Dar- the Darrell, the Darrell Henderson news and like all the, all the value opening up might take some away from Ramondre because he's the best play out of all these guys. Yeah, I think, and we've seen Belichick be willing to just run the ball until it doesn't work. Like unless and we talked, I think uh, last week I talked with Hilo about the idea of playing like Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson together. Yeah, and then that was a good play. And then Damian Harris went out, and Ramondre was suddenly like an incredible play. I and but now that's the situation this week where he's this incredible play. Um, I I'm not going to try to get away from the running back chalk, but the issue is there might be so many chalky running backs that then other guys are getting like completely overlooked. So like I, I do, I like Saquon this week. And I like the idea of doing some three running back rosters. Um, Cause I, I really like, you know, Benjamin as well. I like got supposed to be a high scoring game. Seattle's defense is not look good. Uh, you know, Benjamin seems like a guy that's kind of been chomping at the bit uh, where they, as soon as James Connor was dinged up, they're like, well, it's just going to be, you know, you know, like I think, you know, Benjamin might carry it the rest of the, the way for, for the Cardinals going forward. Uh, Cause he's a uh, running back that can catch passes as well. So I really like that. Um, and then you've got Kenneth Walker in Seattle is like there's DJ Dallas. And I think like Travis Homer might still be alive as well. Uh, and we've seen like Pete Carroll kind of play some running back games before. Whereas like, with Belichick, I think we've seen him with one good running back. I mean, I'm, I may be going back to like Corey Dillon, but he'll, he'll just run the running back out there right until 
until it doesn't work anymore. Um, so I do. I like Ramondre Stevenson. All the running backs look good this week. I'm not going to try to get away from it. Yeah, I like and I like hearing that just because when somebody agrees with you, it makes you feel a little bit better. Right? Like I, because I am I, I'm going to be disappointed in myself if Ramondre comes out and puts up that 12 or 13 point game, but he's literally like a 25 to 30 touch running back. It will be surprising if he doesn't touch the ball 25 times. Uh, in this spot against, again, what is on paper, the worst run defense in football by DVOA. And so uh, it's a it's a good spot. And yeah, I, I like the idea too of three running backs. Because you know who else is going to go overlooked is Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb, people don't like playing two running backs in the same game. And really, you know, one of the things I said this week on, on our Tuesday Inner Circle podcast, I said, anytime you can break rules that actually make it makes sense to break them, the rules, what we have is like, all these studies that guys like Rayvon and Levitan have done over the years of like macro, this is what always works best. So if you can find the individual spots where you can actually break those rules and it's smart, other people don't do it because they're like, Ooh, I can't do that. That's against the rules. And so Nick Chubb and Ramondre Stevenson can both hit in the same game. Both teams are going to be highly run centric. This game should stay close and both guys can, you know, Nick Chubb can run for 160 yards and Ramondre Stevenson can run for 120 and catch several passes in the same game, right? Nothing prevents him from doing that. But because Ramondre is so popular, Nick Chubb's coming in at like 3%, 4% ownership. And it's not just because of the pricing. Like Saquon's getting some ownership love, even though he's expensive. It's it's just people aren't going to go there. And so, yeah, I mean, you can go three cheap running backs or you could go two cheap running backs and then also get up to Saquon, get up to Chubb, get up to one of these guys who can actually – uh, really do something. You know, we still don't have news on Jonathan Taylor yet either. They're saying they said high ankle sprain, but then they're like, well, he's, he's questionable. I mean, but what if he's out and then Naheem Hines comes back this week? You know, nobody's going to be on that one. There's just a lot of running back value that we can play around with this week. And yeah, I think you can go chalky at two running back spots and still be different with a, a third running back. It's interesting. I thought you were going the other way with the Jonathan Taylor thing, because I think he's, being totally overlooked, like maybe yeah. even on like a season long basis. Like he was the number one, like consensus pick for season long drafts. And he had a high ankle sprain, but I believe he practiced. I think he was limited practice yesterday, which I think you see all the time. Like guys don't practice on Thursday, but I think he practiced today. And so I think he might play. And if he plays, like he's not going to see any ownership. He hasn't had a good week, I think since week one, but I mean, that's a guy that can get three touchdowns. The Colts have looked terrible. Like I'm, I'm looking for guys. What I'm looking for is guys at at low ownership that can break a slate. Jonathan Taylor, if he plays, I think is going to fit that bill. And and but you bring up a good point that if he doesn't play, like Naheem Hines, then is you know again people are starting to kind of mentally set their rosters like today and tomorrow. If if Taylor is out on Sunday, like people are going to overlook Naheem Hines. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a that's an interesting call right there. I think about playing two running backs. Just a, a quick point playing two running backs in the same game. I always think of that in week one, when I'm trying to like turn on my NFL brain and start like putting together week one rosters. Oh, I don't, I don't want these two guys in the same roster. Cause like if the, the whole game is there's, you know, three yard run, three yard run, the clock's running out and, and they're not going to put up like these good scores, like with running backs, like with Nick Chubb, I, what I want from Nick Chubb is a 60 yard run that ends the drive, you know, and then gets the ball back to new England. And then from Ramondre Stevenson, right, I want a 50-yard run that ends the drive. Um, so there's really not as much reason to avoid two running backs in the same game as you might think because you want you need that outlier score from both of them that is actually making the game go a little bit you know, faster or at least giving you more plays and more opportunities for the other side. Yeah, like an, an easy way to say that is like, explosive players. And like two explosive players in the same game is always good. And, and that's a perfect way to put it was like, Nick Chubb, you're not rostering him hoping he gets four yards, three yards. You're not rostering him hoping he gets 30 carries and like a blowout win. You're rostering him hoping that he gets some big runs. And same thing with Ramondre. They can certainly both do that in the same game. And so, yeah, that's one of the ones that I've kind of played around with. What I like about this slate is there are, because the chalk is like, is somewhat sharp, uh, it's going to be so easy for people to stick with that. It's when it's sharp, it's hard for people to see how it could fail. Right. And so, but you can look at the, you know, Pete, Pete Overs and I were looking at the chalk roster and it was like Rondell Moore and Tyler Lockett and Chris Godwin. And it's like, 
I mean, Chris Godwin has hardly ever scored 20 points with Brady. When he goes over 20, he can go for like 35 or 40. But most of the time, he's like 15, 17, 18 points. Rondell Moore has hardly ever gone over 29 yards in his career, right? Tyler Lockett, he's been hitting. And so it's like, how could he miss? But we've seen Tyler Lockett hit for 40 points and then go for four points the next week. Like, it's pretty easy to look at things on Friday or Saturday and be like, ooh, I don't even know how these guys could miss. But if all of them miss on Sunday night, none of us are going to be like, how did all these guys miss? Right? We'll be like, oh yeah, of course these guys could miss. And so uh, it kind of, it's like there's sharp chalk, there's sharp games, but also there's some places that are going to go way overlooked. Chalk is kind of hit back-to-back weeks. And so, uh, yeah, there's just good spots that are not the best spots. And so because of that, people aren't going to be on them. And, and it, yeah, it gives us some, like, I think some really, and then there's not that many good spots, right? So it's like, you, you don't have to go way off the board this week. There's just a few, I, my quarterback list is like, three guys, unless I stretch out to like Daniel Jones or Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray, right? It's like Mahomes and Josh Allen and Brady are the sharp plays. And then you can kind of stretch out to a few other guys. And then there's all these guys you're like, I don't even want to touch them. Right. So uh, yeah, I feel like in, in single entry, there's ways to be intelligently different this week on good plays. And there's not that much to choose from, which is, which is really nice. Yeah. I think, I think that's the week. I in- so it, it looks like a straightforward week where I think people are going to be playing a ton of Kansas City and Buffalo, but I think, yeah, intelligently deviating from that. But actually, I think it's, you brought up an important point that I think there's a lot of Arizona and Seattle guys that project well, and I think there's a human tendency with DFS to say, well, I don't want to go with the most obvious thing. And I think actually Arizona and Seattle is going to see a lot of ownership as well, like maybe as much as Kansas City, Buffalo, because the, the prices are much better and I, I'm seeing the same guys like pop when I run projections or, or run any kind of lineups. It's like Rondale Moore, Tyler Lockett, like they, they're really well priced. And then you're going to add, you know, Benjamin to that mix. And I like, you know, Benjamin, cause I think his role is going to far exceed his price, but um, like, yeah, Rondale Moore in particular is a guy that's always going to project well, cause he's going to get a bunch of receptions. That's not necessarily leading to an outlier score. And I think you're going to see a bunch of those like mini stacks, like the Tyler Lockett, Eno Benjamin, uh, and Rondale Moore. And so I actually, I think that Arizona Seattle game is going to go probably over owned as well as like Kansas city and Buffalo. And I think going to some of the other teams that just have the same implied point to it, like, like probably Tampa Bay, green Bay, uh, and the Rams, I think are going to be a little bit overlooked And but that Rams might Ravens. Yeah. 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 And the Ravens. And I think um, Daryl Henderson might bring up the overall Rams uh, ownership, but I don't think anyone's going to run it back with the Carolina guy either. Um, Cause their, their implied point total is only like 15, <laughs> like 15 or 16, but, but like DJ Moore, we is a guy we know has talent. We know that Christian McCaffrey has talent and Christian McCaffrey doesn't necessarily need a big game from Carolina to put up a big score. Cause like he, he can get those receptions. Right. I'd probably have to look back at like the, the Paul Walker, like PJ Walker games from last year. And well, McCaffrey is probably out. <laughs> I don't know if they've yeah, ever. No, the, in, uh, I can actually pull up the numbers real quickly, but that would take too much time. But the uh, it's in the NFL edge. Uh, it was, I think Hyler wrote up that game and he broke down like, it, or maybe it was Mike, but the last two starts for PJ Walker, he supported a huge game from, from DJ Moore once he supported a huge game from Christian McCaffrey once. Like, when you have a backup who comes in, they tend to lock on. I mean, that's one reason I played Jacoby Myers on my main roster last week. Cause it's like, he was coming back from injuries. So nobody wanted to play him. He was playing with a third string quarterback. So nobody wanted to play him, but who's that third string quarterback going to lock onto the guy who is his best weapon, the guy who gets open the most and DJ Moore could easily come out and put up a, a big game. I think that's interesting. You know, the low total takes everyone off of it, but there's a lot of unknowns in that spot, right? Like, the Rams could come out and have their, their best game of the season and Carolina could come out and play really well. I don't think that it's a stretch to say that PJ Walker is an upgrade on Baker Mayfield at this point, Baker Mayfield who's by most metrics been the worst quarterback in the NFL this season. And, and PJ Walker could certainly come out and game manage these guys to a big game, right? How many deep shots is it going to take to Robbie Anderson? Probably not that many. So most of the volume is going to go to DJ Moore and, and Christian McCaffrey, uh, and that's obviously a scary one to pull the trigger on, like smaller field single entry, but large field single entry. I think that one becomes really interesting as well. Yeah. And you, so along the similar line of thinking, um, there's a lot of unknowns, Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh. Like we don't know how Pickens to Pickett is really going to evolve. Like it didn't, uh, 
like, you know, the Buffalo game was a romp last week. Uh, and Buffalo is a really good defense that like you guys wrote up. It's, it's built to confuse quarterbacks. Like, and so like having a quarterback making his first NFL start against Buffalo and uh, Tampa Bay is not much easier of a defense, but I, we don't know. I mean, we don't know, like maybe you know, Pittsburgh's playing at home, like maybe uh, Pickett's a little bit better than, than people think. I mean, and he's probably going to lock on to see, his guy seems to be like Pickens and probably Deontay Johnson. Um, and again, receptions are, receptions are a full point. Uh, so, yep, yep. Yeah, we'll see, you know, we'll see that there, there could be guys from that game, but then, you know, all of this thinking leads to the idea that, yeah, I think you can stack games other than this Kansas city Buffalo game and, and stack games other than the Arizona Seattle game, because there's a lot of unknowns, but there's still some teams, you know, there's still some offensive talent and still some teams that are expected to put up high point totals. Yeah. I said this, this week, if I, if I were, a mass multi-entry player, I would stack Pickett, Pickens, and Deontay Johnson every single week the rest of the season because I'm convinced that 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 stack will be in first place in a Millie Maker at some point this season because Pickett's going to have down games, but he's he's going to have some like 30-point games this year. And George Pickens is going to cost 6,200 to 6,500 deeper into the season. And Deontay Johnson is going to be, you know, in the 6K to 6.5K range. But there's a lot more upside on that offense than people realize. And upside can hit in tough matchups. So my first practice build this week had those three on it. And then as I got deeper into the week, it was like, that's probably not necessary against the Tampa defense in small field single entry. But I mean, the ceiling is there, you know, and so same type of thing, especially, you know, obviously we're a single entry show, but we start talking about like mass multi-entry, like that's an offense that you want to just every week allocate a portion of your build to that offense, because they're going to have some big games this season as well. And, and they've got that downfield work, right? I mean, Trubisky was fourth in the NFL in average intended air yards and, you know, Kenny Pickett's going to come in and do the same thing. They're going to be taking shots downfield and they're going to hit some of these shots. One of these games. Yeah, actually, I think that's an important distinction because we are, we're a single entry show. So yeah, I'm probably not going to be doing a Pittsburgh stack, like a, a Kenny Pickett, you know, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson stack in my in single entry, but I might do like a Tom Brady, Chris Godwin or, or Mike Evans pairing. And I won't be afraid to, to run it back with like a, a Pickens or a Deontay Johnson knowing that, I mean, you know, Pittsburgh still put up, a, you know, a good number of yards last week. I think Pickett had over 300 yards. Yeah. And if that's coming with a bunch of receptions and, and you know, one of the wide receivers, you know, is, is putting up double digit receptions with 100 yards, that's probably enough, you know, for, for that for that price to get there. You know, if if Brady and, and Godwin or, or Brady and, and Mike Evans are, are going off. Yeah, no, I, I'll I'll probably have George Pickens on my main build this week, to be honest. <laughs> So yeah. Uh, yeah, any place where you can get that, that type of upside at a low price tag, I'm going to take it and just, I'll be there on the week when it actually ends up hitting for 30 plus points. Yeah. And I think it will, it'll, it'll end up hitting. And I, I just, I like the, the idea that it's unknown that's going to lead to to lower ownership, but there's still a lot of upside there. Um, yeah. So yeah, I guess any, any other thoughts for the week, anything we didn't hit on that you wanted to hit on? No, I love, I love the, uh, the timing of this show. Cause I feel like, like, you're kind of starting to work through your thoughts. And then on my end, I've like done my DFS interpretations for the NFL edge. I've done a couple other shows. I've built my player grid, but not written it up. And so it's like, I'm kind of able to tie up my, my thoughts in this in like a compact package, which makes me feel really good heading into the weekend. And I love getting your takes on like, on some of these spots are a little more sticky, like the Ramondre Stevenson thing at that, at that high ownership. And that's kind of how I was seeing it, but that, that helps me feel like, okay, at least if he bombs, we're both, we're both there instead of, uh, me being like, I knew this could happen, but uh, yeah, no, I, I like this week a lot. I think it's a great week for us. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and it's it's good to get the the injury reports from practice on Friday, and that really you know shapes up you know what the injury situations are going to be, and it kind of usually narrows down the, the injury situations as well. But yeah, that'll do it for uh, Solo Ship Week Six. Uh, Jam, good good luck this week. All right, appreciate it, man. See you soon.